Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. We are back for part two of Red Flags and Flight Attendant Training. And of course, like I said in part one, if you haven't watched that video, make sure you check out part one and then take a break, get your life together, mentally digest that, and then come back to this video so you're ready for part two because I have more and some of these things might trigger you because out of the part one and part two, somebody's a part of something. Somebody's getting triggered by one of them. Like somebody's representing one of these red flags, but as long as you address it and you get it under control and you don't bring it to flight center training, you'll go through it with ease. Before we get started, I just wanna say thank you guys for subscribing. Um, what else? One thing that I really enjoy about my channel thus far is that we're able to have our little conversation in the comments and share tips with each other because I do think that's very valuable to the newbies and the people who are still deciding if they want to do this job or not. Like, it just provides more clarity for them. So let's definitely keep that going. Also, if you've seen red flags that I'm about to list in training, like, let these people know that I'm not making this up and I'm not talking out the side of my neck. Like these are real red flags and y'all need to know and be aware. Look out for them. If you see them in other people, you don't need to hang out with them. Like this is real. With that being said, let's get right into the video. Ooh, I'm already getting parched. Mm. Make sure you guys are drinking your water, okay? I have one while I get ready and I make sure I have a bottle per flight because the last thing you wanna be is dehydrated when you're flying around. So after I drink this, then I'll already have two down before 12. So I am on a roll. First red, red flag we're gonna talk about is that if you are over 35 and you tend to have a power struggle with people younger than you, i.e. your instructors, who are telling you what to do, like, this is a red flag, okay? Because there are gonna be instructors who are in their 20s who are training you, who are essentially, essentially telling you what to do. And you don't wanna bring that power struggle that like, oh, I have children as old as you like no one cares you don't get any cool points for being a grandma for being a mom for being the oldest one of the group like no you're not gonna get more respect you're gonna get the same respect as everyone else and you don't need to be telling people oh yeah well you know just don't you don't need to always make it known that you're older than somebody okay like don't let the power struggle take away from you learning the material because you're just like, oh, she's young, she doesn't know any better, or he's young. I'm not gonna listen to them, I'm gonna listen to the older instructor, like, no. They're all trained to give you this advice and give you the training, so drop the power struggle, okay? Today, just drop it before you come to train. Next red flag that I wanna talk about is gossiping. So, gossiping, don't, don't bring that to training. Don't gossip about other classmates and, oh, what they're doing on test, how they're dressing to class, how they're late, how they're X, Y, and Z. Don't, don't be like a, just the gossip keeper, the person that knows all the tea. No, you need to be focused on your schoolwork. If you're someone who thrives off knowing other people's business, you need to watch an hour of reality TV, okay? That's all you need to do. You need to find a different hobby than to go and spend your time spreading rumors and gossiping because there are people that do thrive off that. And if that's, live your truth, if that's you. But during training, you need to be focused on other things. You don't want to be the person known as the person that gossips because in my class, we did have people who they knew all the drama. How did they know all the drama? Because they were the same person that was spreading the drama, okay? So don't, don't be that person. The next red flag that I have for you guys is self-medicating. Look, 
what you do behind closed doors is what you do behind closed doors but if you're self-medicating and i mean by like alcohol and other substances we'll just leave it at that then it's gonna have a snowball effect and you'll just find yourself having a higher tolerance for it so now you need more that's kind of into the budget uh, uh now you have to like work harder and figure out how to get more money so that you can like support the habits and it's just not a good idea so definitely find other ways to relieve your stress to lower your anxiety you know look at videos meditate take walks like figure out free things first you know that can help you um there was uh, someone in training. I remember the first week, this person, I'm not going to say no names, had, you know how you get a case of wine bottles? Well, she had a case of wine bottles sitting outside of her door. First week of training, like six bottles empty. And I'm like, Are you selling the bottles? Girl, I know you're not drinking all them bottles. These are full bottles, like six in one week? Are you having one a day? Look, it's no shade. If you wanna do that, if you wanna have a bottle of wine every day, cool. But don't leave the evidence right outside of the door for everyone to see, like, Take them out one at a time in the trash can. Like, do something. Don't just have it all sitting right there for everyone to judge. Because, yeah, that's me. I was looking like, okay, girl. Like, And we don't have roommates, so you can't even blame it on someone else. We know it's you, and you're drinking all this wine. Coming into class the next day, looking tired and worn out. Like, like I said, do what you do. But don't, don't be sloppy with it, okay? Because there are people, like the last red flag, who like to gossip. And if you're leaving evidence right outside your door, then that leads to the gossip. That's easy gossip. So that's two in one. Don't leave it out for people to gossip. That's an easy thing. That leads into my next tip, which is the idea that you only need to be on your best behavior in class. No, ma'am. You need to be on your best behavior at the hangar, on the bus, in the hotel, and anywhere around the hotel, okay? Because people, they have eyes on you. There's, there's eyes on you, okay? And sometimes the eyes aren't even staff eyes. It's the other trainings, and they're looking at what you're doing. So going back to self-medicating and keeping all them bottles right outside your door, People already giving you a label and they're already watching you like, oh yeah, that's the girl for drinks. You don't wanna have that and be labeled that and then be going to class like, you just don't wanna have that. You also don't wanna be like rude to your other classmates or just, you know, be professional across the board, okay? Just be professional across the board even when you're in the hotel room because the hotel staff is definitely known for reporting back, oh, this trainee was rude, this trainee comes in 11, 12 o'clock at night, stumbling drunk. You know, bus drivers, the people that take us to and from the hangar, they can report, oh, this person's always late, which is why I'm arriving late, because they're on the crunch time too. They're getting paid to take us on time. They can say, oh, I always have to wait on her. I always have to wait on him. She's very nasty on the bus. She's, you know, has a bad attitude and she's cursing our X, Y, and Z to other people on the bus. So just be aware and be cognizant that you need to be on your best behavior everywhere, not just in the classroom. Next tip is being in uniform compliance. This is very important. Um, I will give you guys an example for myself in particular. I did read all the rules. However, 
once I was at training, I had skimmed through the rules one more time and I saw that it said you need to have black socks, solid in color. I got that part, but it said something along the lines of like no ankle socks. All the socks that I brought were ankle socks. So when I seen that it couldn't be ankle socks, I was like, mm, no one's gonna look at my socks. But I was like, but just in case, I put on black stockings and socks. So it kind of blends in together and you can't even see. I had socks on because it was really cold. So I was like stockings and socks. So they don't notice that I'm wearing ankle socks. Um, yeah. And I did that every day that I had to wear the ankle socks, of course, because there actually was a time where we had a drill and we had to take off our shoes. Now, imagine if I took off my shoes and my socks were not all black. Number one, that's a write-up, okay? A simple write-up just for not having on all black socks. Then number two, if my ankles were showing, it's another write-up. Like... And they can separate the write-ups if they wanted to. They can be petty because the rules were listed. So don't, the, it, this is, training is not a time to like be nitpicky. Like, oh, why am I getting in trouble for two separate things that you guys could have just put that in one? Like, no, they gave you the rules. You need to follow the rules. And most importantly, do not wear white socks. Do not wear white socks. Don't wear the socks that are like, I don't know, half gray, half black, like just, the full black sock that goes, you know, halfway in between the knees, just wear those, okay? So you're safe and you don't get written up for dumb stuff because that's what they're looking for. Do you follow instructions? If you can't follow simple instructions, when you become a flight attendant, everything is self-regulated. No one's making sure you come on time. No one's making sure you're wearing your uniform correctly. So if you can't even do that without someone basically, what's the word I wanna use? If you can't follow the rules with the supervisor checking and seeing what you're doing every day in training, then there's no hope for you being a flight attendant because like, you're on your own and it's like we can't trust her and we we can't trust her to follow rules and we're watching her every single day so it makes very clear sense so make sure you have the right socks y'all oh wait a minute did you hit the like button thank you thank you i appreciate it okay thank you for looking out okay Thank you for hitting the like button without me asking. You know, you just like the content, you're vibing with it. Thank you. Anyways, let's get back into these red flags. So the next one, flashlight. I know I mentioned this before, but I'm mentioning this again, you guys. And this was something that I did. I had a flashlight, yes, but the batteries were dead. <laughs> red flag. You need a working flashlight. So honestly, you need to just bring extra batteries just in case that flashlight dies because in training, every single day, they check to see if you have your flashlight and they turn off the lights and they want everyone to turn the flashlight on. Honey, you need your flashlight to be working or that's a write-up. And I don't know what they're doing these days. I feel like they were a little more lenient because I was class one of the pan. Can't say the word, but I was class one of a new day and age. And I feel like they were a little more lenient. They might be over it now. Now they're just like, we're two years into this thing. If your flashlight not working, we sending you home. Okay. So make sure you have extra batteries so that if, your batteries die you can replace them right there on the spot and not get in trouble not get a write-up for no reason well for the reason of your flashlight not working of course and another thing in cq i guess i just had cheap batteries because please tell me why my batteries were dying when i was at cq like as i was turning the light on it was 
dimming down and turning off. While I was at CQ, by the time they had checked, they had already passed me and then my flashlight died. So that was, you know, by the grace of God, the flashlight was pushing through for that last little time, but um, have batteries so you don't have to worry and have anxiety or get written up, okay? Next topic that I wanna mention is thinking that the people that you just met in training are your best friends and that the group chat that you guys made, whether that's a personal, you know, I mess I message WhatsApp group message, or if it's from a group me message with all of the people in training, it is a red flag to think that the group chats are a safe space and that the people, your classmates are your best friends. Like get that out of your head. They're not your best friends. And that group chat is not a safe space. So don't find yourself venting about, oh, I can't stand this instructor or I can't stand this other classmate. Like, don't do that. Do that with the people back home. Don't do that with your classmates. Don't Definitely don't do that in the group chat. And another thing, do not post yourself. You're really not supposed to be out, you know, clubbing or drinking or going too far away from the hotel. With that being said, do not post yourself, post evidence of yourself in the group me talking about, oh, I just went to brunch 30 minutes away. It was great. You guys should check it out. Posting yourself, having a good time, all that stuff. No. The reason why I say that is because within my class, there have been people who, let's say, for example, somebody was late or someone got in trouble for going out clubbing hotel staff told on them when they went to class supervisor called them in and said we have information that you were out and you came in late that night um and we're gonna send you send you home listen when karen is in the hot seat she's gonna start snitching if she goes down everybody go down she's gonna be like well, I don't see why I have to go home because Sally and Sarah were with me. That's not fair. And Keisha always has a boy in her room. And Tom, Tom be smoking. Tom be smoking. And they, they will just say, they will tell on everybody. They will tell on every single person. And it went from one person going to the office to now we need Tom, now we need Sarah, now we need Holly and everybody else to come into the office because not only did Karen tell, but she pulled up the group chat and started showing messages and pics and all the evidence that you posted in the group meet because you thought it was a safe space. So... No, these are not your best friends because if they get thrown under the bus, they're bringing you down with them. Whole time, they're probably doing it thinking, oh, they won't just send us all home. It'll just be a write up, a little tap on the shoulder, whatever. No. If someone snitches on someone else and has evidence, both of y'all are going home. Everybody going home. If there's evidence, everybody's going home. No one's getting saved. No one's getting a cookie for being the first snitch. Everyone's going home. So if you're going home, you're going home. I don't feel like it's necessary to take other people down with you. But if that makes you happy, live your truth. Do what you do. But listen, I'm telling you, don't be too buddy-buddy. Because, honey, people will tell on you. Next red flag is going to be having rants on the phone or mental breakdowns on the phone with somebody back home in the hotel room. Honey, you need to make sure these walls are not paper thin because I have literally seen people, other trainees, standing outside of another trainee's door listening to them on the phone as like 
their comedy for the day, like their tea, like, ooh, let me hear what she's, you know, crying about or what she yelling about. Um, yeah. So this is the best thing I can say is that first, make sure the walls are not paper thin. So you want to play some music on your phone, turn it up, and then stand outside of your door. And if you can hear the lyrics, you don't need to be talking in that room because, honey, that means other people can hear your conversation. So I would say actually leave the hotel and have your little, you know, rant, mental breakdown, whatever it is. Leave, leave the premises. Get it out. Talk about whoever you need to talk about. Just do it outside of the hotel, you know, so no one's listening in your conversation or anything like that, okay? Also, like, personally, I had someone next door to me who was like, it sounded like she was screaming, but she was like going on and on about an instructor that she didn't like. And I'm like, and she was in the shower. She did have the shower running, but I was also in the shower. And I was like, I, I can hear like the whole conversation. I was like, wow. I can only imagine if people could hear me talking. So that's why I was like, let me just start going outside and talking because I don't want to be in the same position as she is. So she was trying to cover herself by having the, the water running, but I was also in the shower and like the vent was so close that I could still hear what she was saying. And I was like, this is weird. But um, yeah, so just be mindful of that, y'all. Next red flag. Oh. Not you subscribing. Thank you. Thank you. And you're sharing my content. Thank you. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Your hard work never goes unnoticed. Thank you so much for sharing my content and helping the other future flight attendants out. Okay. Let's get back to the video. Okay, so next red flag, CP time, also known as being late. That is not a thing, okay? Don't, 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 do not do it, okay? Don't be late on the first day. Don't be late after you pass an exam. Don't be late on the last day. And don't be late, late in most importantly, do not be late in your flight attendant career, especially while you're on probation. Because the thing about being on probation, it's like you can be late once and they can really let you go. Because it's like you're on probation. We don't have, you don't have a three strikes and you're out. You're just out. So don't find yourself being late. Um, also, like I said, when I was in training, I feel like things were a little more lenient because they were um, getting themselves acclimated to like the new times of like wearing a mask and things like that. Now that it's 2022 and there's no more masks, um, training is now 100% in class. So these are this is what I've heard from like people taking training this year in 2022 and people are telling me that they have a class of 60 people and it ends with 30 people graduating and most of the people are getting sent home because of they're having breaks in between a class so you'll have like a 15 minute break and if you're not back on time you're getting sent home. If you're, if class starts at 6 a.m. and you get there at 6.10, you're getting sent home. So that's very, it's strict, but you shouldn't be late in the actual job. So make being timely a priority, especially in this job, because that CP time, no, get, get out of here with that. That's not going. Being late, five minutes skating by, no. They will send you home and you don't need to be sitting here looking with a stuck face like, I can't believe it was just one minute. Like, no, one minute matters because we got things to do, people to see. One minute matters, okay? So don't, don't be crying if you can't be on time. Don't do that. 
Also, I just want to recap on the last video when I talked to you guys about tattoos and piercings. You know, I'm just going to touch on it one more time. I already told y'all what to do in the last video, okay? I already told y'all what to do. Cover up them tattoos like your life depends on it, like your job depends on it, okay? And let's say you are able to pass um, training without getting caught with your tattoos or piercings. Um, that doesn't mean it's time to let up and it doesn't matter anymore. No, it very much still matters because this your supervisor can be anywhere. They can be working with you. They can be walking in the airport and just see you and be like, oh, what's your name? Come here. Yeah, come with me. Let me go ahead and write you up for this tag. So don't get yourself in trouble. You could work with the IOE instructor and an IOE instructor who they have to like, because of their job, they have to let you know like, hey, you need to cover that up. Or they could even take it to the next level and write you up for it. You could also have another flight attendant who is just <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Snitch and they will take a picture of it and send it to your supervisor, which I've heard that plenty of times. So just do not think training is over and it's time to relax and now nobody's gonna really care about your tats or piercings. Like, no, cover them up like your job depends on it. The last tip that I have for you guys is to make sure you are keeping your conversations and your group chats friendly and professional, okay? Do not find yourself, you know, getting into bickering and arguing with other people in the group chat because it's just not a good look. Like I said, you can have a Karen that goes and reports all this information to an instructor or a supervisor. You can get in trouble. Um, you should treat your group chat as if there is a supervisor within the chat, honestly. Um because it's work, like don't get it confused. This is not college, it's work, it's a job. You're training for a job <laughs> and they already invested their, their money in you. So they're expecting you to do the job. Um, so definitely don't get that confused. Don't get too lax in the group chat. You know, it's a small kiki, but don't start putting your personal business. Don't start saying who you don't like and who you do like and what instructor you hate. No, okay? And this one is a bonus one that just came off the top of my head. So when you have the Zoom meetings, which I don't know if they're still, still doing that these days because the masks are off now, but if they happen to have a Zoom meeting where you're online or Microsoft Teams, I think it, that's what we were using at the time, if you have a virtual meeting, you still need to be on your best behavior. Um, you need to log in on time. If someone calls your name, you need to be ready to answer because you have an instructor and then you have the person on the back end who is the moderator and who's just watching what everyone is doing. So they're taking note of, oh, the instructor had to call your name three or four times because you weren't listening. Oh, every time we have a virtual meeting, you're always late. So just, you need to be on time and like be professional, you know, at least, you know, chest up, be professional. If you know you have on pajamas, don't stand up now. Don't, come on y'all, this is simple, but I'm just reminding you, these are red flags, like what you doing? If you have a virtual class, you already got it made. So do not roll out of bed with crust in your eye, okay? Brush your teeth, wash your face, comb your hair. And you know, shirt up, chest up should be professional. The instructor has the ability to take your screen from black to actually show what's on the screen. So. I personally always had like a little sticky note over my um, webcam anyway. But so I recommend that having a sticky note just in case, you know, one day the, the little it comes off or they decide to take it off. But yeah, stay ready, at least chest up, 
and have the sticky note just in case. I hope you guys enjoyed the content in this video. Make sure you drop tips down below. Um, if you'd like to add other things, you know, this is a community where we share our experiences, our tips to help each other out. Um, also, if you haven't, go ahead and like the video and subscribe. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.